Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with Az Chat number 81. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, Az Chat's videos, the more podcasty type of video as opposed to a visual video. Something for you to listen to and not necessarily watch. However, however, for your viewing pleasure, if you wish to remain seated, I will have both the Horde and the Alliance perspectives of part two of the pre-expansion event leading into Battle for Azeroth. But as you all know, this is the perfect opportunity to crank me up in the background and get on with something substantial around the house. Now, unless you've been stuck under a rock for the last few days, you would have seen that something major has happened in the plot uh, for Battle for Azeroth with part two of this pre-expansion event. Uh, YouTubers have been clamouring all over the place to see what thumbnail Bellular has created so they can copy it for their own videos. Is that the meme? I don't know. Um, yeah, no, but people have been clamouring all over themselves to talk about the fact that... Uh, for the last few months, Blizzard have been dropping major hints that the destruction of Teldrassil, which we all knew was coming, uh, there was a little, a little bit like Transformers. There was more than meets the eye uh, about it. They, they were hinting that there was something ambiguous about it. Maybe that there was an alternative force at play here that actually caused the tree to burn down. Therefore, exonerating Sylvanas and making this whole Horde versus Alliance conflict a little bit more complicated than it initially seems. However, that's not the case. Sylvanas is just a mentalist and destroyed Teldrassil. Now, before I carry on in the video, because what I want to discuss today in this As Chats is how Blizzard have now complete and utterly backed themselves into a corner for storytelling. On top of that, why I don't think this is the best storytelling. And furthermore to that, uh, the problems that it's causing, particularly for the Horde side. Not necessarily the Alliance side, but quite a few problems from the Horde perspective. Now, yesterday there was a couple of people in my reaction video to what went on. Uh, at Tell Jusil's thing. Oh, Az! What makes you qualified to talk about storytelling? Well, uh, for those people, I have actually brought a certificate today, certificate here. This is my certificate to talk about what the hell I want to, XOXO. It's my channel. Uh, love heart, arrow going through, mwah. And this has been uh, received from the University of Meme. So I hope you uh, are now significantly uh, appeased by my credentials to discuss this matter further. <sighs> anyway, let's move on. So, if you saw my video yesterday, I wasn't particularly enamoured with this part of the storyline. I didn't think that the reaction from Sylvanas made any sense whatsoever. Now, do I think Sylvanas is sweetness and delight and all things nice? Of course she isn't. She's a very sinister character, but she's a very calculating, sinister character. And she's a character which has really resonated with a lot of people. And she's also a character which has had a lot of depth over the years. I think this act has kind of turned this character with a lot of depth into very much a moustache twirling pantomime villain. The reason why she destroyed Teldrassil, according to the cutscene, was simply because she was annoyed at what the dying captain of the uh, Night Elf forces said to her before she went and actually took control and occupied Teldrassil. You can't kill hope, can't I? Look! Burn it! Burn it! Burn it all to the ground! Burn it all! That isn't Sylvanas. Sylvanas isn't a woman who acts out of emotion. She is cold and calculating. Everything that she does in a world of Warcraft is a calculating manoeuvre. Even if it's 
very, very sinister indeed. Even if it's pushing her own agenda. Everything she does is cold and calculating. She doesn't make rash decisions. She isn't somebody that is impulsive and acts out of emotion. In actual fact, the whole fact, I overused the word fact there, but never mind, that she is dead lends credence to her behaviour. Because she is dead, because she's devoid, really, of those human emotions, that humanity which resonates within us, she allows herself to be detached. She allows herself to be somebody who is removed and can, uh, in front of people, give platitudes. Yes, War Chief. Anything you say, War Chief. And then leave the room and be like, fuck that guy. I'll do what the hell I want. She knows how to pander. And she knows that her own agenda is the main factor of her drive. So this emotional response is what I feel is completely out of place with said character. Now, if Blizzard, as I believe it, uh, Ian Hazacosta said in a, a recent q and I don't watch the Q&As, I think they're a waste of time personally, but uh, I think Ian Hazacosta said, from this is secondhand information, so if this is incorrect, don't fucking shout at me. Uh, recently that uh, the whole Teljusil thing was morally grey. Well, if you believe burning down a tree, killing thousands of women and children is morally grey, Ian, I think I might call the police because you've probably got some bodies buried in your back garden. There's nothing morally grey about what happened. It's black and white. It's clear cut. Now, I was streamed last night. I discussed a few things last night. So if you came into last night's stream and you've heard a few of these things, you know, apologies, Mayor Cooper and all that. But, you know, this is going out to a, probably a larger audience that haven't. If Blizzard wanted the destruction of Teldrassil to be morally ambiguous while not involving a third party like Ashara or the old god influence, just making it Horde and Alliance based. It took me 20 seconds to think of something. I'm not saying this is the greatest thing, but uh, I'm, it just took a very, just a few seconds of thought to think about how can we make it morally ambiguous. So the, the idea that I, I came up with just off the top of me bonds was, what if Sylvanas' forces got to the shores uh, and, and all they had to do was cross the sea to go to Darnassus. So Sylvanas, as she is somebody who, as we saw in the storyline as well, can uh, designate responsibility when she um, is fighting Malfurion and Malfurion gets the better of her. It's actually Sarfang Senior who attacks Malfurion from behind, which he describes as dishonourable. But instead of Sylvanas getting the killing blow, she leaves it to Sarfang Senior. Oh, kill him. Take your time. Take your time to get over the fact that you're, you know, you're you're all, you're all prissy about being honourable and whatever. You know, that's this is her shoes I'm going in now, not me. I think Sarfang's awesome. You know, take a moment to get over your honour because you attacked him from behind cheaply and whatever. And then when you're over it, cut his head off and uh, bring it to me. She designates responsibility, so it would make sense. Uh, Storyline-wise, there wouldn't be anything out of character if she turned to Nathanos, for instance, and said, Nathanos, take the forces, take the champion of the Horde as well, go over to Darnassus and occupy it. And then what happens if... Let's just say this happens. So Nathanos goes over. So far, the storyline is the Horde of the Aggressors, the Horde of the Bad Guys. Everything is kind of weighted towards... The Horde being, you know, public enemy number one. What happens if if uh, Nathanos and you, as the Horde champion, because I'm talking to the Horde players here, uh, arrive at Darnassus? And guess what? They actually see stockpiles of Azerite. The Night Elf forces have actually been taking stockpiles of Azerite from Silithus, shipping them up to Darnassus, and then ultimately, once Anduin is aware, let's just say Anduin is not currently aware of this. This is something which has been done, let's say, off Greymanes 
back because Grey Main and the Worgen forces are actually situated in Darnassus too. Um, and then he he was going to be like your you know my king. I have actually taken a lot of this as right. So they get there and they realize Sylvanas was actually right. And this is what the alliance did. So although she was the aggressor, she was actually correct in her assumption of what the alliance would do. And then Nathanos, being a little bit sinister himself, thinks, why not turn the Azerite against the alliance forces? Won't that be bittersweet irony? But is completely unaware of the power of the Azerite because it is something which you have yet to fully understand and comprehend and that actually causes Darnassus to <clears throat> and then Nathanos is like oh shit oh well it's war Teldrassil burns down Sylvanas is like Nathanos WTF and Nathanos is just like look they had Azurite there I, you know, I, 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 I thought it'd be good to use it against them, but it's, it's so volatile, it just blew up the whole thing. Do you have proof that they had it there? Well, no, it's all up in smoke now. So from the Alliance perspective, there's no proof of the Azerite being there. Anduin can naively, but he is a young king, so I don't think there's anything too wrong with playing on Anduin's naivety. Especially when Greymane is much older and Greymane can be that little Iago whisper in his ear from time to time. And he could be like, my, my lord, there was there was no Azurite there. We have not been taking the Azurite. And so you have a morally grey area. It looks like the Horde have burnt down Teljasil. It was more accidental than on purpose. It was definitely you attempted to be used against the Alliance, but not to the degree that it was. And the morally grey area comes in for the Alliance was the fact that Grey Main was stockpiling the Azerite without uh, Anduin's knowledge or consent. So that I'm not saying that is the greatest idea, people. But it took me like 20 seconds to think of that, and that is morally grey at least. You know, you could do different things, but that is morally grey. There is fault on both sides and there's no direct course of action which has resulted in the destruction of Teljazil. It's a, it's a comedy of errors uh, or, or whatever you want to, to class it as. That is morally grey. Silva is getting pissed off for really no reason than to advance plot. A very bad plot right now, can I just stress. To me... Doesn't make a lot of sense. And because it's so clear cut. The Horde are now the bad guys. I don't want to go too much into the bad guy stuff. Which I did yesterday. Because that's what I did yesterday. But it, it firmly establishes the Horde as the aggressors. The Horde as the bad guys. Because the Horde have now murdered women and children. In the thousands. So there is nothing good about that. There is nothing ambiguous about that. There is nothing morally grey about that. It is just unos hundred percentos bad. Okay. So how does this um, affect uh, the horde going forward? Well, I am now going to go into some slight spoiler territory. So if you don't want to know what happens in next week's scenario... When the Alliance turn up at the doorstep of the Undercity. That in itself isn't a spoiler, people. You've seen the cinematic for the start of Battle for Azeroth. This is the cinematic been played out in video game format. Also, I'm going to refer to some things that happen in Battle for Azeroth. However, they're not major spoilers. There's no plot lines that I'm giving away. There's no character development that I'm giving away. I'm simply telling you what essentially doesn't happen so with that said i'm now going to go into the spoilers you got three two one you're still here tough shit so next week when the alliance turn up at the doorstep of the undercity lauderon we see the first moral decision from the horde side 
And the morality comes in the form of Sarfang Senior. And Sarfang Senior is racked with guilt about what he was a party to the week prior or, you know, whatever timeline-wise uh, event it happened in, in, in the actual game itself. But Sarfang is, is racked with guilt about what happened. He refuses to follow Sylvanas any further. However... His loyalty is to the Horde. He isn't defecting. His loyalty is to the Horde. So he says, I'm going to stop the... I'm going to try my hardest to stop the Alliance. Well, not really. He, he, he essentially says to himself, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to go out. I'm going to attack the Alliance until I drop dead. As, as penance. I will die an honourable death, but I won't serve you. But I'm all about the Horde. You're not my Horde. You are not representative of the horde that I believe in. So I'm going to attack the lions. I'm going to meet them head on. And I'm going to fight until I die. That's my penance. And he gets his honourable death. And in his eyes that redeems him. It's quite good stuff. I think it's very good stuff. I think the scenario next week is actually excellent. And I think it... Um, whether you agree with what's happened today or not. Uh, it's not irrelevant. But if you, whatever, whether you agree with what happened, whether you're happy that Sylvanas is, you know, full, full on bad guy, if you're not happy that Sylvanas is full on bad guy, regardless of the way that you feel, I think both parties will be very happy with the scenario from next week. So uh, Sylvanas says, fine, have your honourable death. I don't care. Screw you, Sarfang. And then goes off with uh, Nathalos. Again, just exhibiting more and more and more villainous behavior and when the alliance finally meet uh Sarfang and Sarfang makes his final stand against the alliance the alliance refused to kill him uh they refuse to to to, to grant uh to murder him and Dwin, in fact uh plays a very sympathetic way we're not going to kill you um you know it, but but still but Sarfang remains strong I you know I am I remain true to the horde fine Take him into custody, take him to Stormwind, stockade, let's imprison him. So, uh, so Sarfang lives, but is captured by the uh, Alliance. And in his eyes, is in a complete kerfuffle because he's all about the Horde. He's not into helping the Alliance. He's all about the Horde, but he refuses to follow Sylvanas. What's so great about this? This is the way that a lot of players will be feeling themselves. Now, I'm not dismissing anyone who liked the storyline from yesterday. And I'm, I'm not dismissing anybody who likes the fact that Sylvanas has gone full-on bad guy. Uh, if you're happy with that, fine. There are plenty of people in video games that like to play the villainous side. There's actually an MMORPG on the marketplace that has a villainous side. It's called SWOTOR, Star Wars The Old Republic. And you can play as the Empire. And the Empire are the bad guys in the Star Wars universe. And people have no problem playing for that side. People like to do that. However, the World of Warcraft has never positioned itself as Alliance good, Horde bad. The Horde certainly exhibit more villainous traits. Uh, more, they have more aggressive looking uh, characters more morally ambiguous characters for sure absolutely let's not try and dismiss that for goodness sake they have undead people running around they have orcs that are consumed with bloodlust um you have goblins who are devious and you know maniacal and all this kind of stuff but it's the war chief that dictates how the horde particularly behave and when Thrall was war chief, he had a very good relationship with Jaina Proudmore, for instance, and allowed Theramore to exist, left it untouched. Uh, and Jaina had faith in the Horde and believed that the Alliance and Horde could find, or maybe Scissor, could find some common ground. When Thrall left the position of war chief and passed it over to Garrosh, Garrosh, who is much more aggressive, then Thrall um, started off not great, started to get into the leadership, and then suddenly Mr. Pandaria, Blizzard, 
did what they're seemingly doing with Sylvanas now and just turned him into a one-dimensional bad guy. Uh, sorry, I'll try not to do that again. Uh, in the expansion, and then, he, of course, he just did, you know, destroyed Theramore, murdered this, did that, blah, blah, blah. Um, then when Thrall, uh, sorry, when uh, Garrosh uh, was overthrown, they gave the position to Vol'jin. And there was a period of, like, nothing happening because they didn't do anything with Vol'jin, so that was probably a good reason why. And then when Vol'jin was killed at the Broken Shore, Sylvanas has taken over. And throughout the course of Legion, the Horde and the Alliance maintained a steady uh, existence, peace with each other. And then suddenly um, a big space alien... Stabs the planet with a sword. And the planet bleeds because it's alive. And then everybody loses their shit. And now it's all out war. Because. Reasons. Uh, but put it this way. The, the war chief normally dictates how the horde behaves. And as a rule of thumb. What I'm trying to say is. The horde aren't bad. They are in conflict with the alliance. Yes. They are opposed to the Alliance and the Alliance's ideals. Yes. Doesn't, does that therefore make them bad? No. Because things aren't perfect on the Alliance side either. These are just two factions, two people that can't get along. It's as simple as that really. But this backs everybody into a corner. Because this now, with Sylvanas being the war chief establishes the Horde as the villainous faction. And this is where we come to another problem. Sarfang makes his position clear, leaves Sylvanas' Horde, still believes him to be part of the Horde, just not her Horde. You, if you're a member of the Horde, don't have that choice to make now as mentioned the people who are okay with everything that's happened like i said i'm not dismissing them they'll be happy to follow sylvanas and this new mentality of crush everything destroy everything blah 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 cool nothing wrong with that if that's what you like if that's what you're into nay problem but there's gonna be a load of people that aren't going to like that they aren't going to like the fact that the Horde are positioned as evil, as the Horde positioning as the bad guys. And with the fact that they have no choice themselves to take a similar route to Sarfang, they are now complicit with Sylvanas's nature. They are complicit with Sylvanas's behaviour because you can't leave the horde you can't make a moral stand you will follow sylvanas's orders still now this is where we go into battle for azeroth because in 8.0 there is nothing in 8.0 that furthers this there is nothing whatsoever if you are a member of the Horde, you are a member of the Horde throughout 8.0 without having any choice whatsoever than to do the Horde quests and follow Sylvanas. Now, I liken this to a quest line back in 5.1 in Crasserine Wilds. As a member of the Alliance, there is a part where Jaina Proudmoore wants to go to Dalaran and wipe out all the Horde from Dalaran. Literally commit genocide in Dalaran. And it's not a calculating war thing. She literally turns up and is walking the streets, raining Blizzard down, annihilating every Horde in her way. You have to be complicit in this. I was annoyed with this quest because morally, from my position as a member of the Alliance, I would not do this. I'm happy to fight the Horde in, a situ in certain situations. But just to go to Dalaran and 
literally wipe them out for no good reason. Then Jaina's pissed. Jaina wants revenge. And and Jaina inherently believes all Horde now to be bad because of the events of uh, the book or whatever. That didn't mean anything to me. As the champion of the as the of the alliance, I didn't believe it was the right thing to do. I didn't think it was the moral thing to do. But if I wanted to complete the quest, if I wanted to complete the storyline, if I wanted to get the lovely new HD Griffins at the end of it, I had to participate. Now, that was just a singular quest. So although it annoyed me, and although I wasn't happy that I had to be complicit, ultimately it was one quest and I could get over it. But this isn't one quest for the Horde. This is now what the Horde is and what the Horde represents. And right now, the Horde are the bag. Okay, so we'll do that again. The Horde are the villains of the piece. And you, as a member of the Horde, are now a villain alongside her because you are being complicit in everything that she's asking you to do in 8.0. Players aren't going to like that. They're really not going to like that. Especially when they see how Sarfang reacts next week. And then their frustration at not being able to do it themselves. So, there's something else that we need to discuss as well. There is no redemption for Sylvanas here. There is no plan. There is no story or situation in place in the game already that gets her behaviour a get-out-of-jail-free card. It doesn't exist. Let me just reverse the situation for you. Imagine it's the whore of the Alliance who are the aggressors and the Alliance are outside of Orgrimmar. And instead of Sylvanas, there is Jaina Proudmoore. And Jaina Proudmoore says to you, burn it. Burn Orgrimmar to the ground. Is this out of character for Jaina Proudmoore? Well, she has displayed a lot of hatred towards the Horde after the events of uh, Tides of War. Uh, so in that respect, no. She has been very hot-headed since those events at Theramore. So you would also say no. And to play devil's advocate, let's say we do give Jaina the benefit of the doubt here and say, look... Yes, she's angry with the Horde. Yes, she wants revenge. But ultimately, Jaina is a good person. And this doesn't make any sense. She would stop herself from falling over the precipice of the abyss. Well, then you can say, but she's been gone from the game since 7.0. What happened in that time? There's a story which could be told. There's a story which could be told about how Jaina became corrupted by the old gods. There's a story that could be told about how Jaina is really a dreadlord. There is stories to be told which can be fitted into her absence. Sylvanas has none of this at all. She has no gaps in her life that are unaccounted for in recent times that we can attribute to her decision-making process. On top of that, there is, um, with the Void stuff which has been going on, it's hinted that the Void are unable to control the undead or something along those lines. So it seems highly unlikely that she would be influenced by the old gods. And I'm pretty sure that Sylvanas is not a dreadlord. So there's none of that for Sylvanas. There's no story which can be told to explain her behaviour. And so if Blizzard in the future try and shoehorn a story in, it's just going to look like a retroactive fix to something which they've put into place. It's not going to feel natural, it's going to feel contrived, and it probably will feel if they go down this route, which I don't think they will, I will stress that, uh, it will just feel as if they're trying to fix a mistake that they made 
with the character of Sylvanas. There's also the matter of the leadership of the Horde to discuss. With the actions of Sylvanas in part two of this pre-expansion event, there's no way that she can maintain power. There's no way that she can hold on to power. The divide is already there, particularly with Safang leaving. Safang has influence. I'm sure his story in Battle for Azeroth will be very interesting indeed, especially about how he will fit into the Horde, what happens in his captivity, etc., etc. There's going to be very interesting avenues for where this particular character can go. But as for Sylvanas, when a character becomes an out-and-out -out villain, a la Garrosh, then there's no way that they will maintain power. And the Horde have a complete and utter revolving door of war chiefs at the moment. There is no stability in the Horde, and it's not good storytelling. It's like when you wrestle. If you keep swapping your major championship belt from one person to another all the time, the belt loses its mystique because everybody's getting it. When only a few people hold on to the world championship of throwing sweaty people about, then it feels more prestigious because only a small proportion of people have it. And therefore, if you get it, that is a great honour. But currently, since 2010, we've had Thrall, Garrosh, Vol'jin, Sylvanas, and most likely in this expansion, a fifth. Potentially five, definitely four war chiefs in eight years. That's an average of one war chief every two years. And that's not good for the Horde. The Horde need stability. They need a stable force in control. Sylvanas has displayed she is now not stable. She has reacted out of emotion and she has committed genocide. This is not good. There is no way, therefore, that Sylvanas can hold on to power. There is no way that she can hold on to her position as war chief unless something absolutely intrinsically massive happens to her character. And the only retribution that I can see for her character is to have her humanity restored, i.e. become human again, become alive again. But with this light forged on dead business, I don't know. I think it sounds a little bit silly personally, but whatever, that may play a part in it. But more realistically, and going back to the discussion of Sarfang earlier, it seems to me that the Horde are positioning Sarfang Senior to take over as War Chief. Makes a lot of sense. Number one, he's an orc. I think it makes a lot more sense for an orc to be the head of the Horde. It's based in Orgrimmar. The orc forces are the major force, like humans versus orcs and all that kind of jazz. Sarfang Senior has displayed honour, but at the same time, loyalty to the Horde. He knows when to fight and not to fight. As the storyline has shown today, he will not kill innocents, but he will happily kill opposing forces who would dare attack them he's not a coward but at the same time he's not a warmonger he is a very level-headed in actual fact very thrall-esque type of character so it makes to me a lot more sense for Sarfang to take over as war chief of the horde and give them that stability but of course if Sarfang takes over as war chief of the Horde, then it opens up more, what I would say, amicable situation between the Horde and the Alliance, particularly since he's going to be spending a bit of time in the stockades in Stormwind. There may be some discussions with Anduin. The story may advance to a point where Saurfang has a relationship with the Alliance and at least understands their position doesn't necessarily have to compromise himself as a member of the horde to do so but at least it might give him an insight 
into the alliance mentality and that may only benefit him as the leader of the horde but with sylvanus literally becoming a crazy mentalist there's no way in my eyes she can maintain power and remain as war chief of the horde and to end this as chats there's something else i need to go into and this is more of a general thing to me this is just bad storytelling the whole thing is just bad storytelling i don't think it's within character for sylvanas as i've already discussed i don't think it's right to make the horde the out and out villains uh, morally gray area shades of gray area much more interesting and nuanced particularly as a member of the alliance when you see somebody in the alliance behaving in a non-honorable way then it kind of tugs at your own decision making process to be part of that faction and as long as you deal with that problem then you feel okay about it but while it exists it frustrates so these are good ways of bringing in conflict this story that they're crafting at the moment story just doesn't to me make a lot of sense whatsoever on top of that it really feels like a rehashing of the garage storyline it doesn't feel particularly different to that whatsoever. And the Garrosh storyline, in my eyes, wasn't great. It wasn't great at all. He wasn't a strong villain. He wasn't a villain that could hold an expansion. And his uh, dissension into uh, this crazy, power-hungry, megalomaniac, uh, xenophobic, genocidal war chief came completely out of the blue. Sylvanas is displaying similar characteristics. She has committed genocide. She has burned alive women, children, innocents. Uh, she's done everything which is villain 101. It's stereotypical. It's moustache twirling. It's not nuanced. It's basic it's generic and that all those words when you're doing a story are not the words that you want to use you want to use subtlety you want to use nuance you want to use words like that you want ambiguity you want these things when it comes to crafting good storytelling my certificate in case anyone uh, again uh, this is how you craft good storytelling. Now, the story that Christy Golden is wanting to tell has not yet surfaced in the game. That will start to happen in Battle for Azeroth itself. She's had nothing to do with this pre-expansion event. Those are the words from Blizzard themselves. They're the words from her too. And I have no reason not to believe what she said. For all intents and purposes, although I personally hate the fact um, that Blizzard put things in books, and anyone who's put in the comments section today, this does fit Sylvanas' character if you read the book. I dismiss that immediately, not because I'm being an arsehole, but simply because the vast majority of people that play the World of Warcraft will not buy that book. And on top of that, the vast majority of people who play the World of Warcraft will not seek out the lore of that book. The vast majority of people will simply be confused by what's going on motivation-wise with characters and why things haven't been explained in the game. That is a fault of Blizzard, and that is a fault of Blizzard alone. If you want to craft an existing story in an MMORPG, put it in the friggin' game. Don't put it into a book because you want to ka -ching, make a quick buck. You make plenty of bucks. Give the people that pay you the plenty of bucks good story in their game. Wouldn't that be nice? Thank you, Blizzard. Falling on deaf ears, obviously, because shareholders. So things like that, to me, don't work. This storytelling device feels Cataclysm 2.0, Garrosh 2.0, 
Mr. Pandaria 2.0. It all feels as if we've seen it all before. And that is the last thing that you want uh, when you're doing a game. You don't want people to think, oh, God. How many people have you already seen tweeting Garrosh 2.0? It's all, it's all over the place. It just feels, here we go again. And you don't want, here we go again. You want different. You want unique. You want that nuanced story. And with Christy Golden coming on board, I really hope, I really hope that going forward, that's what we get. But the simple fact is in 8.0, we don't. In 8.0, if you're a member of the Horde, you're following Sylvanas. And that's the only thing that you can do. We know that Ashara's coming in 8.2 at least. She was going to be the main villain of that raid. But a character like Ashara, to me, is a character worthy of their own expansion. There's plenty of wonderful story to be told with the Naga and Ashara and everything that's happened between the time of her fall and the time of her betrayal of her people. And now, to kind of shoehorn her into maybe 8.2, possibly 8.1, feels as if she's having a disservice dealt to her. So I'm not I'm not on board with with the ideas which seem to be thrown around for Battle for Azeroth. I think they're backing themselves into a corner and they're not thinking about how things are going to start to transpire, how things are going to start to play themselves out. They have essentially with Sylvanas taken a beloved character and killed her. They've taken a character that was very nuanced, that had a lot of depth to her, and they've just made her into a black and white villain. They've done exactly what you shouldn't do with complex characters. You've reduced them to a base. And that's not a good thing. So, to wrap up now, I don't think this is good storytelling. I don't think this is good characterization. I think this is way too similar to things that we've already seen before in the world of Warcraft. For anyone that says, but that's two year expansion, give it time, you're being unfair. I don't think I am being unfair because we are all able and we should be judging the product on what they release. And there's been no setup for this and there can't be any setup for this. There can only be retroactive fixes and, or botch patches or whatever they want to do to try and resolve this issue now so the story after two years maybe the story is great and i say after two years oh well that, that was a good ride that was a good story i did enjoy that but does that justify what's happened here probably not do i believe that in two years time i'm going to be saying those things probably not and is that just because I'm a toxic WoW hater? No, it's because they have proven over the years the inability to tell good stories. The last good story that was told in the World of Warcraft to me was Wrath of the Lich King. When they had an existing character in uh, Arthas who had tons of lore behind him. But since they've gone through the major players, the Illidans and the Arthuses, since they had to go on to ancillary characters, the Deathwings, then the storytelling, in my eyes, has been very, very weak. So I can only judge Blizzard by what they've put out. Warlords of Draenor's story, nonsensical drivel. The Legion story, some good stuff with Illidan, but the actual Legion stuff pretty terrible not even getting off the broken isles nothing happening in Kalimdor, eastern kingdoms north end pandaria for the carrot for you as the player to do in game it just they didn't feel like a threat after such a strong start they just felt like people that really liked the color green Missa pandaria couldn't empathize with the pandas whatsoever couldn't care about them at all because they were written as clumsy lazy fat 
drunk. Oh, enabling. Oh, oh, save us. Do everything for us. Couldn't get into that at all. And the Garrosh thing was just nonsense. So based off their past history, I'm concerned. Christy Golden's on board. She has a very good reputation. Yes. But exactly how much of her story resonates through Battle for Azeroth? I'm not sure. And is it going to be strong enough to carry the expansion? I'm not sure. I really, I really can't comment on that yet until I see her work in action. So just purely from a historical standpoint, Blizzard have not proven to me that they've been capable of telling a good story for a lot of years now. And this start, the expansion, by the people who have been doing the existing story before, goes alongside that. So, you know, I think this is where this toxic wow hater uh, is going to wrap up this video. It's not as if I've explained anything and gone into detail as to why I think such a way at all. I've just literally, for an hour or so, or 45 minutes or so, talked about, I hate wow, well, I hate wow. Well. Uh, so there we go. As Chats 81 comes to an end. I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming links. They're in the description box down below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care. Bye for now.